Hello and welcome into another knife review. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the uh, Benchmade Model 553 uh, Griptilian. Uh, if you watch my other videos, uh, you'll notice a little bit of difference here. I have this little um, uh, stand. Uh, it's a, a universal display stand. You can use it for pretty much anything you want. But it happens to fit knives pretty good. And I, you know, I actually had a spare one laying around. I never thought to use it in my videos. So it kind of holds the knife upright here for you. You know, when I'm talking about it, as opposed to just leaving it here like this. <laughs> where sometimes the blade's kind of reflecting off and you don't see what's going on. But anyway, I'll start using that since I have it. Um, like I said, this is the model 553 uh, Griptilian. Uh, the only difference between the 553 and the 551, which I already reviewed, is the blade shape. Uh, other than that, it's identical. The 553 has the um, Tanto blade. Um, I do say Tanto and, as opposed to Tanto, but you know, everyone knows, everyone knows what I'm talking about. It's uh, you know, personally, I think it's preference. Some may say one way is right, one way is wrong, but anyway, everyone gets the same picture here. Um, uh, like I said, I do have a, a video review on the other one, so if you want to check out that one too, that's fine, but I realize not everyone is going to, um, uh, you know, search through all my videos just to find it, so I figured I might as well do a full review on this, you know, anyway. Uh, so first, let me give you some specs on this knife. Um, the blade length on this one is 3.45 inches and again keep in mind I'm talking about the full version this is a full uh, model Griptilian uh, they do make many different uh, variations on the Benchmade Mini Griptilian okay, which is obviously smaller um, I would say depending on you know your hand size and what kind of knife you you know you want to uh, carry you know for maybe EDC which stands for everyday carry you know or perhaps you know um, some other purposeful uh, knife um, again it's, it's preference you know, if you like a smaller knife, go with the Mini Griptilian. If you have, you know, larger hands, uh, you're going to want the bigger one. Um, so anyway, blade length is 3.45 inches. The handle, or the knife closed, is 4.62 inches. And overall open, as you see here, is uh, uh, just over 8 inches. It's 8.07. Um, the full uh, weight on this is 3.25 ounces, uh, which is actually reasonable. Uh, it's not very heavy at all. Um, it's a fairly light knife for, you know, almost a three and a half inch blade, uh, a little over three ounces is pretty much average. Um, you could do better, you could do worse. Uh, the price on these, uh, I, now I got this one in a trade, uh, slightly used, um, but, you know, on average you could find Griptilians, any model, uh, any version of it, except for, you know, some of the limited edition versions like the Ritter Griptilians uh, or the uh, D2 version, which uh, actually my other video shows. It's a... Um, special version of the 551 in D2 uh, tool steel. Um, but anyway, the average um, model is going to run you roughly $60 or so. Again, it's going to depend on where you're buying it from. Uh, it's very affordable. It's a very popular knife uh, by Benchmade. It's kind of like their staple knife, you know. I mean, they have tons of great knives, um, but they sell just so many Griptilians. It's kind of like uh, Spyderco sells a whole lot of Enduras and Delicas, you know, I mean, that's like their staple knife, and they'll probably keep it in their line pretty much forever. Uh, they'll keep upgrading it, making it better and better, uh, and changing it, you know, same with the Griptilian. Uh, speaking of which, older model Griptilians uh, were done in 440C for a blade steel. Uh, in 2006, uh, they upgraded and started using 154CM on all of their Griptilian models, and that's what this has um, so you know it's a later version. I do want to give you that uh, bit of information there in case you're ordering uh, one from a store and you, there's a possibility they have what's called new old stock. Okay, that means that they're selling a Griptilian new or, or any knife for this matter. Uh, it's a brand new knife, however it wasn't made recently. You know, it might be six years old, you know, in their inventory. So you want to uh, double check and, and ask, okay, hey, you know, is that the, uh, you know, I'm interested in buying this knife. Is, do you have the newer version with the 154CM or is that an older version? Because um, even though 440C is a very decent steel, it's, uh, it can't compare with 154CM. And uh, in a little bit later in this review, I will, uh, you know, explain a little more about 154CM, uh, which I, f I find is just awesome. It's... It's a really good uh, compromise uh, in strength and um, you know price, but anyway, I'll get in, into more of that later. Um, most people love the uh, the Griptilians for the axis lock. It's a, one of their more affordable models that have the axis lock. Of course, they have uh, some more expensive ones. And as you can see there, it's very fast. 
easily to, to deploy, open and close. I mean, you can get this thing open very fast and close it up really fast. And if you don't want to do that in public and scare everyone, you can, you know, you can open these nice and slow and close them nice and slow. Nothing says you have to whip them open, but uh, you definitely can if you want to. Um, and again, I got the fingerprints there. I'm kind of anal about wiping those off in these uh, more higher polished blades, so please excuse that. <laughs> and I didn't get it all, but I'll leave it there anyway. All right, now I have to <laughs> now I have to clean it. It's gonna bother me. Um, anyway, um, no, but these, these are just these are fantastic knives. Just like I say, you know, my other review. Um, the one thing that people might not like, and that is the uh, handle. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, turned off by the Griptilian series because of their, you know, full polymer handle here. Some people would rather prefer a G10 or some other synthetic besides what they use in the Griptilians. And uh, offhand, I do not know uh, what this is. Um, I didn't make note of it. Um, actually, I'm not sure Benchmade site says it specifically on their Griptilian page. Uh, but again, it's going to be a, a very hard, durable synthetic. Um, I don't want to guess as to what it is. Could be FRN. Could be something else. Uh, I don't think it's Zytel. It has a much different feeling. Um, but, you know, I, I have to say, out of the thousands of people who own these and talk about them online constantly, I've never once, uh, you know, read a thread on the forums or, or heard of anyone having a problem where this was cracking. The only problem I ever hear about the Griptilians, the single only problem I ever hear, <laughs> is about the access lock. Uh, and this is a very rare occasion, but it does happen um, with a lot of wear or sometimes just, you know, I guess maybe get a lemon or a dud. Uh, the spring inside the access lock, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have a video uh, on the access lock where I take um, uh, a different knife apart, um, the Benchmade uh, 420 resistor, and I show how the inner workings of the access lock. Uh, but actually, there's a little spring here that keeps the tension, okay, keeps that up. And um, sometimes, and again, it's very rare, but sometimes I see people having problems where they break. The spring itself snaps, and they have to send it back to Benchmade. And it's not a big deal, you know, if you're still under warranty, um, you know, they, they fix it for you. It's not a big deal at all. But it's an inconvenience. But, again, it's rare. You know, I don't, I don't hear about it a lot. I'd say probably, you know, maybe, again, I don't want to make up numbers here, but maybe, you know, one in every thousand, you know, that happens. Okay, they sell a lot of these, you know, thousands of these. And, uh... It's a very rare occasion where I hear that happening. But it never personally happened to me. And this is actually probably my... Let me think for a minute here. Um, this would be my fourth or fifth Griptilian. Um, I had a mini Griptilian. I had uh, the 551. A regular version, I had the 551. Uh, I did the review on in the D2. Uh, stainless steel and the OD handles. OD green uh, handle scales. and I had a couple different versions of it. And I've never had the problem. And I, you know, so, sometimes I use my knives really hard. Sometimes I baby my knives, but never had that problem. Um, so let's see, uh, how's it feel? It feels pretty good. Uh, I like, I like the grip saying because the handle itself is a little wider than what I'm used to. Um, a lot of knives, like Spyderco knives, and again, this is preference. You know, some people like a very thin profile on a knife, okay, very thin and sleek and slick. Um, I, I think I prefer a little bit of beef. Okay, I can certainly appreciate the Spyderco knives, and they do feel very good in the hand. But if I had a choice, um, I would want just a little bit of a wider knife, and that's what this one offers here. It offers you something to really hold on to. Um, they do have uh, jimping and um, uh, you know grooves on the spine here. It's not it's not the best, you know, but there is something there for you to hold on to, as well as you know in here. Um, because they have the access lock, there is obviously there's no line or anything. So uh, if you were to hold the, the knife in this fashion, you do have something to put your thumb on. It kind of it assists in grip a little bit. Like I said, it's not the most um, purposeful um, jimping or or you know grooves cut into there, but it is there. Uh, same thing on the the butt end. Um, there's some you know by design there's some lines uh, you know protruding out there for for grip. And it's kind of slick. It's not like this. Like I said, it's not the best, but it is there. Um, so it feeling in the hand, it actually feels pretty good. I've used this in different conditions, wet. You know, my hands were wet, you know, and dry, and it's it's decent. You know, no complaints really. Um, uh, what do you say? Oh, lock up, lock up, up and down. 
is perfect. I mean, these access locks, they do a great job. Um, just awesome. I, I have no, nothing to say about that. Up and down is great on pretty much all Benchmades, but I do individually check them um, for blade play. Because now up and down to me is a lot more important than side to side. Uh, up and down, if you have play up and down, that's something wrong with the knife itself. I mean, that is something that, you know, if, if it bothers you, you can't do anything to adjust it. That's with the locking mechanism, okay? Side to side blade play can always be uh, fixed with um, some adjusting of the pivot screw, you know, given the fact that, you know, the knife you're talking about is adjustable in the pivot. Um, and this one has a little bit of side to side play, which I don't mind. I actually set that on purpose. Uh, to make a really smooth opening and closing. It's not wiggling so much where it's going to give me a problem, just slightly, so I can free up that, uh, you know, the restriction in there with the metal rubbing. So, again, really fast deploying knife. Um, but, you know, Benchmade's, uh, you know, it's a major knife company. I never had a problem with their, with their lockup and, and any other knives. Uh, the Red Class line, you might want to just double check on some of those because they are more affordable and cheaper. They have a little bit less uh, quality control. Um, they're made overseas. So, you know, so far all the uh, Red Class Benchmades have been fine for me as well. Uh, no problems with them either. But like I said, you might get a lemon every now and then. Might want to just check them over because you never know. Um, pocket clip on this is uh, very nice. It is uh, swappable from right hand or left hand carry. You see the, uh, you know, the holes drilled and tapped there for you. Uh, but it is only a tip up uh, carry as you see here. Uh, you cannot swap it to it like a pivot mounted uh, clip, which is fine. A lot of people prefer this. Um, not everyone. Some people do prefer a tip down carry knife. Uh, something you might want to consider if that's a major uh, issue for you. You might not want to go with a, a Griptilian. Um, but overall, just fantastic knife. Uh, the 154CM, as I was saying before, um, I actually modified this. When I got this knife, I uh, brought the angle back, way back. Really shallow. I showed that in another video. Um, I think one of my EDC updates maybe. Um, but I put a 12 degree edge on both sides, okay, very narrow, giving it a 24 degree edge uh, in total. Now that now those numbers I'm talking about are more suited for kitchen cutlery. I did this kind of as an experiment uh, to see, um, you know, how that would hold up to, uh, you know, constant use. A very thin, thin edge like that, it, you know, you're going to have uh, a tendency to chip you know, or have your edge roll over because it's very thin. I mean, it, this thing is razor, razor sharp, uh, ready to go. Um, and that's why I did it. But I, again, I wanted to see how long it would last. And at my work where I, you know, my what I do for a living, which is more of a job rather than a career, uh, I work with the mail. Um, but a lot of times I'm cutting uh, plastic uh, straps off of, you know, bundles of uh, newspapers and, and different magazines and stuff like that. So I was a little worried by putting a really shallow edge on here, that was going to affect the performance and I was going to have some chips. But I have to say, thus far, I've been using this knife quite a bit and I've had no problems whatsoever. It's been fantastic. I mean, the edge is it's great. Uh, I have touched it up a couple times. Having a really, really thin edge like that, um, it will dull faster. But I'm telling you, this thing was scary sharp. Um, so, so far, so good. Uh, Tanto blades. Okay. Well... I'll be honest, I think that they look really cool. However, I do prefer a clip point or a drop point blade over a tanto blade. Um, more than anything else, the convenience of sharpening. Tanto blades are hard to sharpen properly. Um, again, if you have some kind of system, it's not going to be too much of an issue for you. Uh, but I, I do find them a little hard to sharpen. And, uh, you know, the big, the big thing of having a, a tanto blade is a reinforced tip. The design itself is supposed to give you a very strong tip. And I have to say, um, I've personally only seen of one knife, and I'm talking all different brands, that had a tanto blade where someone's uh, tip snapped off. And again, that was because they were using the tip to, to pry something. Um, I, I have to say, you know, I'm a big, big fan of telling people not to use your knives for anything other than cutting. They're meant to cut. Um, <laughs> that's just what they're for. If you use your knife to pry, expect a tip to break. It's just, uh, it's all part of the game. Um, however, if you need a knife where you might need to pry in an emergency type situation, you know, um, if it's not a regular practice, it's something you're going to be doing, you know, very, very, uh, um, what's the word, uh, I guess seldom, uh, a tanto blade would be better than a clip point or something with a more refined edge or a more acute edge. 
So it does have more tip strength, um, better for stabbing. However, um, you know, how often do you really get a stab with your knife? I mean, we, for daily tasks, we're, we're slicing and cutting. We're not stabbing. Um, but anyway, that's my two cents on that. But overall, the, uh, the knife is, is it's fantastic. Uh, big favorite of mine. Uh, if I end up trading this knife or selling it, I'll probably get another Griptilian. Just because I love them so much. There's really nothing I could say more. I mean, they're great knives. And the 553 is no different. It's just a different blade, uh, blade style that, that I would prefer. But again, it's, it's totally adequate and fine for what I need. So that is the 553. Um, as you can see here, I went well over my usual 10 minutes. I'm at 15, almost 16 minutes soon. Uh, this is kind of an experiment. Ever since I got the uh, uh, upgrade to being a YouTube partner, um, I realized I can't have I can't have videos over 10 minutes. However, I never really I still stop at 10 minutes because the uploading process is ridiculous. Uh, but I figure uh, this one I'll just I'll talk and get everything I need to say out, and then upload it and, and see what happens. If it takes really really long to upload this video. This will be the last long, long video uh, that I make. <laughs> I'll just keep cutting them and, and doing parts, 10-minute uh, chunks, you know. Um, but that's that. That's uh, kind of an experimental uh, portion of this video. So hopefully you didn't get bored watching all 16 minutes of me rambling. <laughs> um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, definitely love the knife. Like I said, I've been using it for a while now. It's been my current EDC uh, for probably four weeks now. Mm, yeah, about a little over four weeks. And it's been going strong. It's doing really good. So once again, thank you very much for watching my video and tuning in. I certainly appreciate it. And I will see you in my next video. Take care.